Today, we're going to talk about four Microsoft Form features that you need to know about, starting right now with feature number one, timed quizzes. I have navigated to Microsoft Forms where I already created a couple of forms for us to look at. I will click on the quiz and you can see that I have a short four question quiz. By default, there is no timer, so let's go to the settings and create one. Click on the three dots in the upper right hand corner for more form settings and then choose settings. In the options for responses section, Microsoft has added a set time duration option. If you hover over the information bubble, you will see that this allows you to give somebody a set time in which they're allowed to edit the form. After the time runs out, the form will automatically be submitted. When I put a check mark in set time duration, you'll see that the default is 30 minutes. I think two minutes is more than enough for this short quiz. And notice that the quiz has a two minute timer now in the right hand corner. Now let's preview the quiz so we can see what it looks like for the person taking the quiz. They can see a few key pieces of information. This is a time form and they have two minutes. Once you start, you cannot pause the timer. Forms will give a one minute warning and when the time runs out, the form will automatically be submitted. I always suggest as a best practice to test your forms before you send them out. So let's click to start and notice that the timer is running at the top of the page. Now I can quickly fill out this form and then I'm going to jump ahead so that you can see the one minute warning when it pops up. As the person taking the quiz, I now see a yellow banner at the top of the page letting me know that I'm almost out of time. I should check my answers one more time and then I can go to the bottom and click submit. A completed confirmation message appears. I left the default option to allow responders to see their results. So I can click on view results to see which questions I got right and any that I may have gotten wrong. When Microsoft released the timer feature, they framed the announcement around quizzes. But if you go to the settings for a regular form, you will see the timer option there as well. The next feature we're going to talk about can save you a lot of time and that is the quick import. This option is not available on the forms home screen. To find it, you must go to the middle right side of the screen and select all my forms. Now you can see quick import. What this does is it allows you to import a Word or PDF file that you may have created with a bunch of questions on it. We're gonna look at some important guidance first so that you know how to format your file. The best question types according to Microsoft are multiple choice or open text. I also find that true false works very well because the import treats it like a multiple choice question. You also want to make sure that there's clear separations between the questions, so I number mine. Make sure that the content is arranged vertically and remove any figures or complex equations. If you've created a document that has many questions that fit this criteria, it can save you a lot of time to import the file versus typing the questions into the forms app. But it is important to know that the file size limit is 10 megabytes. My file fits these criteria, so I'm gonna click upload from this device and pull in the Word document that I have created. You have the option to import your file as a regular form or as a quiz, whichever works best for your business practice. I'm going to select form and the app will convert the Word document for me. When it's done, you will see a message confirming that the import is complete. Then you can import another form or quiz or start reviewing the one that you just uploaded. Let's take a look at the import we just did. As I scroll through this document, I can see that all of my questions did in fact upload correctly. I'm going to customize this form just a little before I send it out. I like to add a theme and I also like to go to the settings to decide who should be able to respond. In this case, I think anyone should be able to respond instead of just people in my organization. As a quick note, I'd like to point out that if you go to the groups to try to create a form, you will not see the quick upload option. The only place you're gonna see it is in your personal forms. So what I suggest is if you want to use quick import, create the form under your personal forms, then select the three dots for more options and move the form to the appropriate group. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is how do I print a copy of the responses that I submitted? So let's take a look at how to do that. 
I have navigated back to a form and then I will select the three dots in the upper right hand corner and then select settings. In the responses receipt section towards the bottom, choose allow receipt of responses after submission. Now we're going to preview the form to see what it looks like. I'm going to quickly fill out the answers for this sample form and then I will submit it. Notice the button for print or get PDF of answers. If you click that, a document will open that has all of the questions and answers on it. On the left hand side of the screen, you will see the option to print or save as PDF. Now that we've spent all this time making our form just right for our particular scenario, it's time to share it. To do that, go to the collect responses button. Previously, all you would see here is the option to change who can respond and get a copy of the regular or shortened URL. Recently, Microsoft added the option to quickly share your form directly to Outlook or Teams. I'm going to start by selecting Outlook and all you have to do is type in the name of a person or group. So I'm just going to put in my name. Now, one of the things that I did notice during testing is that I could not send a message to Outlook and Teams at the same time. So notice if I select Teams and type in the word finance, there are no results. So first, I'm just going to send the message to Outlook. Then we see a confirmation message letting us know that the email has been sent. Now I'm gonna hit the back arrow button and this time I'm going to select the checkbox next to Teams. This time, when I type in the word finance, you see that two channels come up. I can send a message to the finance webinars channel or to the general channel. I want everybody in the team to respond to this survey so I'm gonna send it to the general channel. You may have noticed that Forms pre-formatted a message that has the name of the form and a due date for submission. You can change this message if you want to, but for this demonstration, I will leave the default. And when I'm ready, I will click on send. Now let's navigate over to Teams so that we can take a look at what this message will look like. Notice that I'm in my finance team in the general channel. On the post tab, everyone on the team will see the message that was sent. It has the name of the form and the message telling them to submit their answers by the 27th. If a team member wants to submit some answers, all they have to do is click Start Now. This will take them to the form. Sending a message to Outlook or Teams is a great option because it allows you to quickly get the information to your target audience and get the responses that you need. There you go. Now you know about four of the newer features added to Microsoft Forms. If you would like to learn more about the Microsoft tools that you use on a regular basis, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.